Hi there, welcome to QA Box Let's Test. If you have not already subscribed to this channel, kindly do so. And if you like the video, give them the thumbs up. All right, so we have covered Mocha and Chai. So now the stage is set and we are ready to write our first basic unit test cases. And before we move on to the actual code, I would like you to go through this particular video if you are not familiar with the terms and technology being used into unit testing so here and i've talked about different test doubles right uh, how to write unit test cases using triple a pattern right uh, how to to structure the test cases basically you know and so on so you will find this helpful all right so now what we are doing here is we are not going to cover the doubles for doubles i'll create separate videos right so in this video we are only going to talk about the basic unit test cases all right so you supply input to the methods all right and you expect some output so here's a class being created in the name calculator and which has got these simple straightforward methods so it's a box right so you provide two input values a and b and you get the output in the form of the result of these two values all right it's a simple straightforward method that we have written and now we have to test it so few things before we start testing that so i've created the object of this class all right and rather than first exporting the class and then creating the object uh, in the test file i'm directly exporting the object and now in this module i've imported that all right and you must be familiar of describing it and we are going to make use of expect interface from chai library to write our assertion all right so now what we are going to do here is we are going to invoke this method all right and going to store the sum of it in a variable with the name result all right so basically in any test case we have these three stages right we have a range all right then we have got act and then we have got assert all right so we don't require to arrange anything in this particular case all right we just you know passing some parameters to the box right and then we are expecting you know the output to be some of those in you know parameters are being passed to the method all right so what we are doing in this test case so we are testing some method all right and it should return correct output when provided with positive input values all right so we are providing two and three and we are expecting the result to equal five all right that's our first test case second test case is you know we herein we are providing the negative values and then doing the testing all right and this is how we have to think okay what else do i have to test uh, in this particular case so for example if you're working in some other programming languages like you know when you have those uh, you know doubles and ends so you can pass in the maximum value that's another use case right that you have to cover and so on so next is basically uh, this method division all right and you know we can pass in let's say some basic values our test could be right uh, should return correct values all right and we can say we are passing in here four divided by two all right that's a common case uh, so in that case this should be two all right the other case in when we are going to divide a number by zero all right and then the outcome would be infinity all right so javascript does not um, you know throw the uh, division by zero error so it just returns the value as infinity so we are going to check this particular value and same ways you can apply you know uh, these uh, test cases in your you know sub and multiplication method so i'm not covering those because we are just here concentrating on so what are we doing in here we are just passing in the values right there's a logic written inside that method we are processing those values and then producing the outcome right that's what this method is doing and these are the few basic test cases that we can write so because when we create a function we know what logic we have to write inside that and that's the logic that we have to test 
so we just have to pass in you know different uh, set of data through that logic to ensure that you know we are receiving the correct output and if that is not the case right we are going to change the method immediately all right so these are the few things that we can write and now let us save that and let me execute these and i hope so all the test cases are being passed here all right so this is a very simple straightforward example no complexities involved right but in real life project code often does a lot of things that make testing hard like ajax request uh, set timeouts in java right script uh, dates accessing you know other browser features like you know uh, local storage session storage and you know interacting with the database you know there's network involved you know we also need to access files right so these are all the complexities that are involved when we are working with you know real time projects so all of these are hard to test because you can't control them in your code for example if you are using ajax right so you need a server to respond to the request yeah, so as to make your test pass if you use you know set timeout your test will have to wait you know with database and networking it is the same thing you need a database with the correct data or a network server so in short basically you know the these things that we have talked about are kind of dependencies and we have to run our unit test cases in isolation so unit test case our unit test case represents a unit of behavior you know not a function right and you have to see it that way so you because unit testing is something that is being done in memory all right so that way is you know you have access to everything so there are no external dependencies involved your function is not dependent upon any external dependencies so how is it possible to do in memory testing since ajax network database etc are important and they will stay all right so the, the answer to that is you know kind of you know when you're working in javascript so you can use synon or synon uh, so synon basically you know by using synon we can make uh, testing non trivial code trivial all right and synon basically allows you to replace the difficult part of your test with something that makes testing simple right so in testing a piece of code you know you, you don't want to have it affected by anything outside the test like i mentioned you know those external dependencies right if some something external affects a test the test become much more complex and could fail randomly so, so basically your unit test case it could have only two states either they pass or they fail it's not like your ui test test cases you know where you you have all those all these dependencies like you know browser network file database you know ajax all these dependencies are there and therefore the point of failures increases and at times you know uh, testers raise the bug with the tag intermittent because they they don't have control over things right but that should not be the case with unit test cases right they are always fast they are always reliable points of failures are less they are lesser dependencies okay so synon basically allows you to replace a difficult part of your test with something that makes testing sim simple right so when testing a piece of code right you don't want to have it affected by anything outside the test right so fair enough so if you want to test code making an ajax call how can you do that then Right, you need to run a server and make sure it gives the exact response needed for your test. It's complicated to set up, right, and makes writing and running unit tests difficult. And what if your code depends on time? Let's say it waits one second before before doing something, right? So you could use a set out in your test to wait one second, but that makes the test slow then, right? So imagine if the interval is longer, right? For example, uh, some minutes, right? so are you going to wait for that long all right no so by using synon we can take both of these issues plus you know many more uh, and eliminate the complexity so how does synon work then so synon helps eliminate complexity in test by allowing you to easily create test doubles 
right test doubles uh, you know as the name suggests uh, they are the replacements for piece of code used in your test say in case of ajax instead of setting up a server if you replace the ajax call with a test double stub right with the time example you know we can use test doubles like fake timers right to allow us to travel forward in the time uh, with an we can replace any javascript function with a test double which can then be configured to do a variety of things to make testing uh, complex things simple so send and splits you know basically uh, test doubles into spies stubs and mocks so spies are basically which offers information about function calls without affecting their behavior stubs which are like spies but completely replace the function this makes it possible to make a stub function do whatever you like like in throwing an exception return a specific value and so on mocks which make replacing whole object easier all right so if you have to just replace one method go for stub if you have to replace the whole object right then go for mocks and mocks are basically you know combination of both spies and stubs so in addition to that you know sinan also provide some other helpers right like fake timers which can be used to you know travel forward in time uh, for example triggering a set timeout and fake uh, xml http request in server which can be used to fake ajax request and responses so now we are going to see all these like you know spies stub and mock in the upcoming videos but before we end this video make sure that you write unit test cases even if you are a beginner you know just start with writing these basic test cases when you are just testing your methods on different set of data right and ensure that you know you are covering different uh conditions you know edge cases for example division by g zero is one in case of you know work you are working with file so you pass in the name of file which does not exist let's say right or um, index out of bound things and you know just there is so many uh things that we can test okay uh if a method is supposed to throw an error right so what argument of the function is causing that error right so we have to test that for example right so if we have handled the uh, you know the exception then what should be the message that should be returned in case there is an error all right so you can also test that part all right so that way is you know we can we can um, you know design our application better going forward because we are learning these basic concepts right while doing testing of our application right so that's about you know writing basic test cases and some theory on you know um, send in the next video will we'll start on you know, those advanced um, concepts test doubles which will help us in eliminating the dependencies that we'll find in the real time projects thank you so much